Sir and uh, three speakers. Our chair for the session, uh, Sri Jacob Ishu sir, retired as an additional chief town planner from the town and country planning department with a uh, and holds a master's degree in planning and bachelor's degree in engineering. He has about more than 40 years of experience in, in the urban planning and town planning sector and has served in various key posts and have been instrumental in formulation of various acts, guidelines, uh, model zoning regulations, IDDP, LDP guidelines, handbooks, etc. And he has been instrumental in preparation of the integrated district development plan for Kollam, the first of its kind in the country, which have been acknowledged in, a, in very wide uh, avenues and perspectives. He was, is also now the secretary of the Society of Our Space, a professional non-profit making organization and he also is presently a consultant with the ULT, uh, Uralingal Labor Technology Solutions Private Limited. He has published more than 40 papers and he has been shortlisted uh, once for the Prime Minister's Award for Excellence in Public Administration. So a man of impeccable record, a man of proven public service, a recognized spatial planner across the state and even across the country. We are happy to have you, sir, uh, to chair this session. I request Jacob Isho, sir, to kindly uh, occupy the dais. And we have three speakers for the session. Um, our speaker, first speaker is Dr. Ajit Kaliath, urban chair and professor at Kerala Institute of Local Administration. He is a geographer and an urban and regional planner who has a PhD in land uh, as a critical ecological resource for sustainable cities from Queen's University, UK. He's, he has got a Researcher Plus Award by uh, Queen's University to his credit and has about 20 years of professional experience in various positions and key posts. He was an Indian principal investigator for the UK-India Joint uh, Network on Sustainable Cities and uh, was uh, secured the runner-up position in the Newton Prize uh, 2017. I request Professor Dr. Ajit Kaliyach sir uh, to kindly occupy the stage. Second speaker of the day is uh, Srimati Josephine J. Uh, Madam uh, is uh, presently heading at the, as the Chief of Decentralized Planning Division at Kerala State Planning Board. She holds a Master's degree in Analytical Economics and Bachelor's degree in Education. She has a long spanning career since uh, 2000 uh, starting as a lecturer in Economics and uh, in 2004 she joined the Kerala State Planning Board as a Research Assistant and in since 2015 she was appointed as the Chief Planning Officer in Scheduled Tribes Development Department Government of Kerala and also served as a member of the Project Sanctioning Committee of Tribal Development Projects of NABAD and Departmental Working Group for Scheduled Cost and Scheduled Tribes. So she has been instrumental in handling the planning the uh, planning process and decentralized planning processes and proje projects and plans of Kerala state since being in the planning board as a chief of the decentralized planning division. So we are very happy to have you here, madam. I request uh, Josephine, madam, to please occupy the stage. The third speaker of the session is uh, uh, Professor P.K. Ravindran. Professor P.K. Ravindran is a de retired deputy director of the College of Education Department and a former president of KSSFP. Uh, he is a former uh, director and registrar of IRTC also. He has played many key roles in formulating policies for the government of Kerala in various capacities. So he is a governing council member of the Maharaja's College Ernakulam and he uh, is the member of many government committees including working groups for the Kerala State Planning Board and he is also known as a popular science writer. So sir, we are also very happy to have you here sir. I request uh, Professor P.K. Ravindran sir to kindly uh, occupy the stage. I request uh, Jacob Isho sir to kindly introduce, I mean, uh, offer the introduction remark and the timelines. Thank you sir. Good afternoon, everybody. We have a time limit of one hour for this session. So since we are planners, we have to manage, we have to plan our time also. So um, I am fixing a time limit for each speaker for 15 minutes. And uh, after uh, the speeches address we, uh, we can have a 10 minutes open forum so our today's subject that is integration of decent less planning and spatial planning that is our subject in this subject 
See, there are two terms are here. One is decentralized de planning, then spatial planning. And the subject of this seminar is how we can integrate the spatial planning or decentralized plan and decentralized planning. Or in another way, the plans of the LSGs, local self governments, with the plans under the Town and Country Planning Act. This is the actual question we have to address. See, before going into the planning, these two planning systems, we have to understand what is the nature of decentralized planning and the spatial planning. In order to understand this nature, it is better it is better to see what is the product of this de decentralized planning and spatial planning. Who are using this product is the, our question. Who is using these plants? First, uh, uh, let us come to the spatial planning. In spatial planning, of, of course, suddenly this uh, word, it may be confusing. Anyhow, the product, uh, especially for uh, cities or urban area, it is a, our product is master plans and DTP scheme. So, we know master plan and DTP scheme, its main component is the land use planning and zoning regulation. It is discussing something based on the land or place based planning that is we are actually doing in spatial planning. Then the question who is using this master plan and DTP scheme? See according to me the answer is very loud. Have you seen master plan document in any land department? See, for last 40 years, I haven't seen nobody is carrying our master plans. But the building inspector, they have the master plan. The only building inspector is carrying. And also the town planning department is also having these master plans, these documents. Then the question, why this line department is not carrying our uh, master plan? Why it is? Even in preparation of uh, uh, local plans, there is no working group under named spatial planning. I haven't seen any working group under uh, local governments named spatial planning and also uh, every year the planning board or planning department or LSD department will issue guidelines for preparation of uh, decentralized planning. In there also, yeah, I mean there is no reference of the master plan and similarly, see if you go into the uh, state planning board, have you seen an addition, division named spatial planning? No, it is not there. There is perspective planning division is there. There is decentralized planning division is there. But the spatial planning division is not at all there. That is the uh, situation. So, what is the fault in our master plan? I say our master plan is mainly a regulatory in nature. It is actually referred for the for giving permission to the buildings. That is why building inspector is carrying the land use plan. The development component in the master plan is too weak. It is not traceable. That is the uh, problem. It is very rigid. Now our master plans are very, very rigid. 
and again uh, say another uh, example i can say see in secretariat the files are classified uh, like uh, 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 RA, uh, uh, RB, likewise. It is RA and RB, RC are given to the town planning departments. Why it is R is stands for regulatory. But see, if you see in the decentralized planning, their file it is DA, DB, DC. Meet they. Uh, consider decentralized planning as a developmental plan and the activity of the town planning department or activity of the master plan is, is considered as a regulatory function it's a regulatory nature that component uh, regulatory component is very high Another issue in the um, our master plan is, is it it is for a long range period that is 20 year plan and it is not fit into a democratic process because democratic process is for a five year every five year there is an election in the local governments but our uh, master plan mainly not mainly it is it is for the 20 year plan so actually planning is a decision making process so the political process for the master plan is very important so it emphasizes the need of a, a middle range of five year plan that is the uh, necessity that we are seeing because see five year political process of five year political agenda five year political manifesto it is not at all reflected in a long range 20 year plan that is the uh, another issue that we are seeing so it is becoming a rigid plan and the legal process of the master plan is very cumbersome also. I think more than five or six officers it has to go. And uh, finally it has to go into the law department also. Such a laborious or cumbersome legal process is there. And uh, mainly master plan is mainly used for land use plan and zoning regulation. These are the two component uh, um, normally people's knows. And there was a uh, survey conducted in SPA uh, during 80s and during I think uh, uh, 2000 uh, years. In that survey the people reported that 80% of the people don't know the master plan. But in another hand, the people's planning campaign that 100% of the people know decentralized planning. That is the uh, situation. This is the situation uh, what we are seeing on master plans. Coming to the decentralized uh, planning. In decentralized planning, the product you say it is Pathadi uh, Rega. Sometime uh, you may uh, remember there is a cinema, latest cinema, uh, Palthu Janva. In that uh, film, you see there is a veterinary doctor. He is from a line department, the veterinary department. When his assistant came, he said, this is our Bible, this is Pathadi Rega. And this Pathadi Rega was uh, 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 hand over to the, uh, his assistants. But in another hand, if you see the Pathadi Rega, this LSD plants, 
mainly it is uh, animal plants mainly uh, it is meant for one year sometime uh, there is a perspective of five year plan also and if you go into the uh, annual plan you can see it is a collection of project it is you can see tables of allocations of fund that is the main output in the annual plan or you can say it is a financial plan more in allocative nature and but the uh, beauty is that once this plan is allocated it will be implemented that is the uh, beauty of the annual plan but in another uh, plan the master plan actually it is like a paper plan only even smart city or jnurm they never go into the master plan take the project from master plans so this is the situation of the decentralized plan then our question is the integration i as i said the master plan is for 20 years it's a regulatory in nature it is more a technical in nature and it is uh, rigid you can say or pudiya thenga pudiya thenga pole irukku ariya of course you can understand pudiya thenga ariyavallo pudikkan okkatha or thenga pole aanu master plan irikkunu angana aanu adinde structure adinu oru karan nikkunu the thomas pavlov sir once uh, on during his retirement he say actually he is the person who prepared the first master plan of the tirundavaram and when he is returning he was told that it is only uh, only in paper so you can see there is a wide gap between master plan or this uh, spatial planning and the fire plan or the annual plan of the lsd or there is a wide gap between decentralized planning and uh, spatial planning also there is no space or no room for suggestions of the ward sabha or grama sabha so the solution what i strongly suggest is that we need to introduce a special medium term five year plan in between master plan and the decentralized plan then only it will be implementable then only it is it can be executed so such a developmental spatial plan will act as a platform for integration that is a, my strong solution and of certainly this is not a new solution i agree many uh, international national agency has recommended this so this is my strong uh, suggestion one second need of a division in the planning board uh, un, uh, under spatial plan second third my suggestion i am placing this suggestion for discussion that is uh, when during the working groups are constituted there should be a special working group uh, that plans uh, for execution under master plans so all special planning working group should be there and thirdly other points also recur this uh, there, there is another gap that there is a state level plans is there similarly there is a local level plan is there actually the, uh, there is also a wide gap between state level and uh, local level plans so in, uh, we have to strengthen our district level uh, dpc to formulate a integrated uh, district plan the, uh, this is another uh, suggestions uh, that i am making here and with this words um i am inviting the speaker professor dr ajit kalit to present the his views and uh, kindly limit uh, 15 minutes
ഇടില്ലേ പിപ്പിട്ടി ഇട്ടില്ലേ Okay. Good afternoon. So I have 15 minutes to take you through a about uh, 30 slides um hoping to do it a whirlwind tour. We have uh, two speakers who have been deeply embedded in the uh, decentralized planning process here. One the chair of the session Sri Jacob Bisho as well as uh, uh Professor PK Ravindran and also the head of decentralized planning division at State Planning Board. I am not going to really go deeper on that part but what I am trying to do is to uh, inform about the various debates happening on the integration of spatial planning as well as decentralized as well as um, other engagement so um so I am going to first get you to to look at two contexts one this is something which is staring at us a climate emergency and uh, we as we are aware kerala is also experiencing challenges coming from these um changes in our climatic conditions resulting into various forms of uh, additional enhanced vulnerabilities and obviously we are required to kind of uh, improve reposition reengineer our planning system and that only will help us to to deliver um more resilient plants but at the same time we also have to be mindful that whatever we are doing is going to be affecting human lives so this is a famous quote from shakespeare cities are nothing other than agglomeration of people so if any process that we are going to undertake any professional any technical process in fact in the morning there were speakers who were mentioning that what is required is much more democratic process not a technological process technical process we need to kind of have a shift from uh using too much of too many jargons and too many technological uh ideas to something which can be grounded in the social and cultural reality so how do we go there sorry the the title has got cut so there are few patterns which are important for us to to get into this discussion one there is something called southern urbanism southern urbanism is uh global north and global south is a debate happening about the rich and affluent countries the europeans and japan and all the global north and global south is india china and those countries so there are patterns in southern cities which are related to these three tendencies one it's constantly characterized by persistent disconnect between can, uh, capital and labor and also what we keep doing is we keep on expanding our territory whenever there is a problem for not having adequate space for waste waste management not adequate water available we keep expanding our city's territory and this is a standard pattern seen in most of the southern uh, cities and obviously we are metabolically very uh, inefficient we consume lot of energy consume lot of water consume lot of material and we have been producing lot of waste uh, and so itself that contributes a lot of our difficulties and political economy and so informality feeds into the certain political behavior and then it feeds on the other side also there are three key forces having aware being aware of the time i am not going to get into but these are certain aspects which will help us to see the connect uh, between what i am trying to articulate and these uh, basic patterns weak planning system that's a point i want you to be to be noting here and expanding sprawling uh, cities which is contributing to peri urban areas which are again disconnected ex urban areas ex urban spaces were uh, services and uh, opportunities are inadequately available um so that results into these kind of uh, patterns whereas whereas the most well organized well planned cities have got uh, compact development and so itself upward growth is the kind of nature whereas 
cities in global south including india and china you would see much more sprawl happening so these are certain global evidences coming from and what it results i wanted to use this this word here to say what andreas says is revenge of the places that don't matter uh, is places communities which are not getting adequate services adequate provisions adequate opportunities there is resentment getting built and obviously that gets translated into the into the local political vision as well as and it reduces the opportunities in that space so there is a great call for five interventions in planning it's not about growth it's not about making money or bringing investment but it's rather about well being but more important here for us today is there is a democratic deficit which need to be kind of addressed through planning process and that process can have only if when we are able to kind of understand there is knowledge outside the planning fraternity there is knowledge outside the technocrats there is also knowledge available in the society which gets collected and and sent to us through various political discourses as well as the the local democratic process so it's important that we institutionalize that whether through a medium term special plan which uh, the chair recently just mentioned or through other means of communication which we can use that we get people to be responding on a uh, frequent basis to to different ideas and engage them from the very beginning so the voice of the people in the process of planning is seriously missed out it's not here it's happening elsewhere also so there is a global call to say that planning need to be much more democratic there is no point you produce a plan which does not relate with the local reality which does not uh, confirm to what people in that region that space want to to achieve collectively and i would only want you to focus on the, the word a voice here a voice basically three contexts buildings places and communities if you look at across the scale all that matters is a person should have a voice if my voice is heard in a community i start feeling that i belong to that community if my voice is not heard then i feel i don't belong to that community so the voice is a very important aspect for people to feel belongingness and that's where they start uh, being part of the the entire community building this is also part of the planning traditions of social mobilization and social reform so allowing people to be engaged in the process of planning from the very beginning helps people to start forming trust in the planning process it's not something alien i am not given something which is a place neutral idea something which is which works in tokyo or california is not brought to uh, ernakulam or uh, calicut or uh, tiruvananthapuram is something which is important for people to understand so if they need to kind of trust the process of planning and uh, get into the vehicle of planning we need to kind of engage inform and equip them so planning agencies need to kind of i i'm well uh, you know i'm conscious of the reality that there are senior colleagues sitting uh, here across the uh, across the room who are from the planning department but it's important that we uh, kind of nudge this in so we get much more citizen control if we manipulate if we just inform the citizen we are only able to kind of keep them disengaged they will not be aware what is happening here especially so the more we inform them the degree of engagement increases and eventually we are able to see a condition where citizen really take charge of the plans and that's how we build much more social trust and social capital so if this is what we want to achieve a community where people connect with each other they feel safe secure they they feel assured in the company and the, and the in the presence of other people if that kind of a trust need to be institutionalized it has to be through the process of planning and that has to be distilled through every step of spatial planning and master plan preparation we are enabled by these new opportunities behavioral insights which which i will want to spend half a minute here so this is something which is now available because we all use uh, the range of apps today zomato swiggy and all these things and what that helps us to is to produce hyper local data hyper local data is used by e-commerce firms hyper local data used by journalists but hyper local data is not really used by plan for planning purposes and that certainly creates a disconnect so we need to kind of use those 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 systems and just to ensure that the debates are we are having is also happening elsewhere 
that what kerala currently confronts that how much deep more deepening we can do for the, the uh, deepening we can do the uh, planning as a as a democratic process is also being taken up in other parts so they have also gone through this process and having established a localism act there are standards which have been established for community engagement there is a great call which has which is as uh, late as 2019 that people powered planning process so bring people into the center and in the pro entire process of planning and that how, that's how you kind of some example citizen assembly citizen panels we have parallels here we have the community councils happening elsewhere and we have ward committee which has been institutionalized through the kerala municipal act 1994 and it has provisions for um, councilor to take lead and other experts to be co-opted into the process where specific technical inputs are to be given and the town and country planning act 2016 again brings back the need for ward sabha ward committee to be involved in the process of preparing the plan and also communicating educating the citizen about the the value of a properly developed uh, master plan and the new town and country planning uh, bill 2021 which has mainstream risk informed planning in kerala supports two aspects one very specially contextually prepared plans the risks which are contextual risks which are multifaceted need to be understood and they need to be kind of be part of the the planning process which is what uh, lsd planning currently undertakes and the second part is communication so not just having information about the risk is not sufficient we also need to communicate about these risks to community on a regular basis how this area is going to get inundated are there going to be new new risks is there any any kind of expected landslide or any earthquake or maybe forest fire or a fire in the center of the city because the temperature is rising there could be many kind of risks so how do we prepare people through communication from the very beginning and that process is become has become now part of the risk inform master plan which is which is uh, the new version of planning in kerala so coming to the uh, nearly end of my presentation there is a uh, there is a, an increasing recognition that the spatial planning cannot be done in isolation it is basically a con convergence of various knowledge it obviously was uh, was was uh, done through various forms of surveys but also understanding how people behave that's how they are calling for behavioral science how the plan that you produce is for people who whom about you don't know so what kind of crowd behavior how do they relate how do they operate in real life that's known to the e-commerce firms and they appropriate their marketing strategies accordingly and planners also need to kind of look at those evidences to make planning much more uh, active and agile so uh, just concluding points it's important that inclusive planning must recognize multiple forms of knowledge i said this is my one of the first statement that it's important that we ensure the knowledge available around the place is captured so we are able to produce generate societies and communities which have a spirit of the place and invest much more in participatory process and this is my last slide here what i'm trying to attempt is to say kerala has no option other than working towards equity and resilience together resilience without equity is not going to happen because the person who are weak deprived if they are not getting the right opportunity there will be certainly many more conflicts so equity and, and uh, resilience together need to be achieved means you also need to have a very dynamic system in place agile planning and governance system that being the the foundational part it's important that we co-opt more design thinking master plans are not sufficient you would have seen in the earlier sessions how cities are looking at using design thinking how cities are looking at zonal subzonal street and site plans so need to bring much more design thinking into the into the plan if we do that we achieve the two gains one we optimize density you saw earlier in the morning that how through plan and in the interventions you optimize density you don't allow informality you don't also make it too sparse so that there is no economy you also ensure that there's greater diversity so pluralism multi ethnic multi linguistic multi faith communities can be created through planning process and if we achieve all these things there is going to be greater trust in the planning process so our need is to ensure the spatial thinking is also 
imbibed in the minds of the elected representatives, there is also a need to ensure that they are aware of the, the value of planning. So we collectively work to establish, sp create spirit of the place. And I think this is the next frontier, the, the democratic, there is a call for democratizing entrepreneurship. I think there is also a need for democratizing the entire process of planning and all the good works that uh, the Town and Country Planning Department in Kerala has done. Now I think it needs to be translated into more visible actions and I think we can go forward to get those things done. Thank you for listening to me. Good afternoon everybody, respected people's representatives and dear listeners and speakers. First of all, I thank you, the organizers, thank the organizers for inviting me here. Not because for making me a speaker here, to make, for making me a listener here, because from right from the morning we were getting good sessions, very informative sessions. And here, after Ajit Kaliyath has made a presentation, detailed presentation about uh, the integration of tower, uh, spatial planning with decentralized planning. And I'm, I'm, I'm only adding to this. And our uh, chair has said, made, made some remarks on our decentralized planning and spatial planning. My remarks is that we have a unique system of democratic decentralization in Kerala. Where, where, uh, where the other states has not done, has gone ahead in, in. And here, our decisions are people's decision. Whatever is taking place in Kerala is, is the people's decision. So we are proud of that also. But we have some drawbacks in our, in, uh, in, uh, because of the recent developments in the state. We have come, uh, come across certain drawbacks in our planning process and that we have to rectify. But it doesn't mean that our process was wrong because we are the only state that, uh, uh, that democratic recent decentralization could be very effective. Uh, because I don't believe that th there is no spatial planning in a decentralized planning. Because the people are planning, the local people are planning for themselves. They have their indigenous knowledge about the locality. So there is spatial planning in decentralized planning. but uh, that is not in a much technocratic way. The people's knowledge is very important and they are using that for planning. This is my first observation and there is spatial planning but not in a technocratic way. But we have to make it uh, a bit more technocratic and by making use of some uh, specific data and maps and all, we have to rectify it. We will go further also. And See, here, from the planning board side, I should say that this is the only state with five-year plans. The other states have given away the five-year plans. We have a state five-year plan as well as uh, five-year plan for local governments. That is called the development plan. And every year, we make annual plans also. In spite of the, uh, in, in line with the perspective plan for the five years, we are making uh, annual plans also. If if we have made a perspective and if there is any change uh, necessary in, uh, in due course or if any change is necessary, we are going for that also in annual plans. If we make a comprehensive perspective plan for five years and in the annual plans we make additions and deletions also according to the situation. So that is the wonderful planning process we are adopting here. And state planning board or the government is of strong belief that we need five year planning in the state and that not because of uh, plan, uh, mere sake of planning because we are as Kaliath has said here we are going for equity we are going for clearing the regional disparities when we do this when we, uh, we when we do for equity and when we go move forward for uh, crossing the regional disparities some issues has turned up because this is the state 
uh, with 19 urban agglomerations. No other state in, in India has this. We have 19 urban agglomerations. This is causing a great deal of problems to us. In other states, we have only certain city-based uh, development in other states. But here, every settlement is becoming urban and the most urbanizing state in, in India and the uh, uh, and 80 percentage of the urban uh, sorry area is going to be urbanized in near future also so this is a big challenge for us uh, because in terms of development also we have to uh, spread across the resources everywhere and so many issues are coming up all the uh, districts have to be taken in uh, in that uh, development perspective also this is causing a big issue uh, in economic development for us but we are happy that we are going for an inclusive uh, development in the state but we will uh, come across this situation we with more judicious planning and uh, more efficient planning process here let us sit down Ajit was also mentioning about the global concerns of climate change. Our small state with land uh, it is also land scarce and we have highlands, midlands and coastal plains. Now all the regions are vulnerable. This is the big issue we are going to face. So there is a requirement for planning also. Here we have 41 west flowing rivers. And my humble request to the town and country planning department is that do we have a plan for this? Or uh, uh, 41 rivers, west flowing rivers, which are going to create, which are now creating and which are going to create severe damage to the uh, state in future. So the drainage plan is not proper. Uh, the climate resilient, though we have gone for the local governments have gone for climate resilient uh, action plans or disaster management plans whatever it is but they they are just kept as plans that is not integrated in their annual plans that is a big issue we have to come uh, we have to overcome now So now, uh, urban planning and urban development need to be environmentally sensitive but at the same time provide housing, employment opportunities and supporting utilities and services for the people. Now the local governments and the entire state is moving towards creating a knowledge economy and the problem of unemployment is also severe. So we will have to address this issue also. Development issue is also more important as that of uh, spatial planning. The, edu the uh, educated uh, unemployment is greater in Kerala, so this issue is also, uh, this also requires spatial dimensions also. So in, uh, not only in construction we need, uh, in local economic development as such, we need uh, uh, spatial planning uh, in Kerala. And coming to the master plans, we have prepared uh, we are preparing master plans for our cities and towns and even rural local governments. But unfortunately our preparation of master plans itself is stagnant for many years. Even the cities and uh, municipalities, even the corporations and municipalities uh, itself we don't have master plans. When we talk about spatial planning, the town and country planning department also have to understand the situation even though we are preparing master plans but uh, the implementation side when we look to the implementation side as Ajit has mentioned here and the chair has mentioned 
they are only restrictive or regulatory in form. In, for, uh, it is mainly used for construction practices and also in a regulative nature. But the, the entire aspect of sp uh, spatial dimension of planning is not understood by the local governments. The local, uh, only a few people's representatives are, Tripunitara chairperson is here and uh, Kodi chairperson. The, the sensitization given to the local representatives, people's representatives is very less. We cannot keep our technical thing in the shelf and say that the people's representatives have to implement that. The people should understand, the people's representatives should understand, the people, uh, the officials who are dealing the urban matters have to understand. Have we done anything to sensitize them in these days? But we, if we have not done that, we have to do that. What is the importance of spatial planning in Kerala's context? So this is one issue I want to tag here. And, and also, the technical training side. The training side is also weak. Those officials who are posted in urban uh, local governments, they are not governing the spatial dimensions of planning. Even now we are not doing that. Some corporation secretaries are here. They are not aware of the technical aspects of planning. The one other thing we have to look into that is the urban, the sorry, town and country planning de department has to reach out to the local governments. At least to the corporations. At least to the corporations and municipalities. But we don't have a system here. This is not the issue in the state only. It is the problem faced in the entire country. There are a lot of uh, posts in the entire urban local governments, and this the government of India. The government of India also show, should take uh, come with a solution for this. The urgent need in Kerala is that there should be the 14th five-year plan. In the coming years, in the ensuing years, we will also look into that. And other thing is, one, one serious issue the local government is facing is solid and liquid waste management. Here, for solid waste management, something is happening. But in liquid waste management, nothing is happening. Our water bodies are getting contaminated. Here also, we need a special uh, approach for planning. And in Amrath, we got about 18 septage and sewage plants sanctioned. But we couldn't even start... Uh, even uh, two, only one uh, plant in Thiruvandaram uh, Corporation, we, uh, we could do that. Others are still pending because of people's agitation. These are the things for the people, but the people will agitate. How long we can go with this contaminated water and contaminated underground water, well water, and uh, without retrofitting the toilets? Everything is an issue, and the, here also there should be some element of spatial planning. Uh, in, in our processes. Then, one other aspect is Amrath is coming up. Amrath project has been uh, implementing in the state and now the second Amrath 2 is also being launched in the state. And KSUDP project is being implemented. That is Kerala Sustainable Urban Development Project funded by ADP. ADB loans. And here also we should understand one thing, certain cities get uh, uh, schemes for implementation, other cities are left behind. Other uh, certain corporations get, municipalities are also working in the nature of corporations, certain municipalities. But uh, only a few gets assistance under Amrath. But this is causing a good deal of disparity among the uh, different cities and this is also an issue we, which we have to tackle and this is also under the purview of the planning board and we will look into that also. And housing, we are we have gone a lot ahead with the life mission and uh, uh, with the support of PMAY also. But still there are issues in urban housing because of the scarcity of land. We are not going for high multi-story buildings, we are just going for individual houses, that will also create issues in uh, urban areas. So that will also have to be looked into. We are just providing small houses, uh, single individual houses, individual houses uh, only. In, even in uh, city corporation area, the, that also have to be looked into. We have to go for multi-story buildings also. Then. 
one other aspect is district planning committee and district plans integrated we have formed district development plans now we are in the stage of updation of the district development plans but unfortunately till now we could not bring in spatial dimensions to the district development plan but this year if we are, when we are going to amend this or uh, update this uh, we will definitely bring this uh, into uh, the spatial dimensions into the district plan also my time is running out so we should not stick uh, we only to the construction side uh, uh, this, we should not look into the spatial dimensions only in, uh, to the construction side we should also look into the other wider aspects of development that's agriculture development animal husbandry fisheries wherever possible waste management housing in all aspects of development we should have to go for uh, spatial dimensions also the the tourism also see then the role of LSED engineering wing then that, that I have to mention here that's why I'm mentioning role of uh, the LSED there is a special uh, cadre of engineering staff LSED wing but they don't have uh, uh, town planners in that even if they have one person in the corporation they are going looking after the permits and all that has to be changed and the LSED engineering wing has to go in coordination with the uh, uh, town and country planning department as part and the DPC secretariat has to look into this because the DPC secretariat is coordinating the town planning office also so this uh, and their expertise has to be revisited in terms of project formulation in terms of implementation in, 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 uh, in terms of project cycle how efficiently they are working that has to be looked into and Kila finally coming to Kila Kila has, Kila has to look, uh, revisit their training modules of, uh, uh, for the uh, staff of the urban local governments. With this I conclude. So may the master plans aim to create an inclusive, highly livable, economically vibrant and green environment to all care lights, focusing on housing, transport, economy, recreation, identity and public spaces. With this I conclude. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. I invite uh, Professor P. K. Ravindra to present. As I am given only 15 minutes, I don't think it will go for the presentation as such. It will be a more or less an oral one without uh, the aid of any PPT and things like that. At the outset, I have to say that we are speaking about something that is Kerala specific. Because the decentralized planning is there in Kerala only. How we can merge or integrate the decentralized planning with spatial planning can have only relevance to the Kerala situation. And in Kerala, if you take for example the case of the urban scenario, the 2011 census gave a uh, number that it is 47.7 percent urban population and the trend now in 2022 may be somewhere around more than 70 percent uh, the state of urbanization Kerala a report that was published by the prepared by the uh, department of town and country planning of which the principal functionary was Isho when the report was prepared Am I right? So that report actually has said that by the 2021 census, unfortunately we have not got data for that, it may be around 60 or 65 percent. And if the thing continues goes on as usual, their prediction is that by 2031 it may be around 92 percent. So Ernagulan district if you consider the 2011 census itself says that the urban population is 68 percent. So in a place where the urban population is 68 percent, we have got an agency what Dr. Josephine was saying is the district planning committee, which is to prepare the annual plan recognition exercise one side, but the district plan, district development plan, which will include the spatial component as well. 
or rather which has to include the racial spatial component also which at present is not but it is basically a subcommittee of the district panchayats so at present the structure of the district planning committee is such that it cannot cater to the needs of urban local bodies so this has to be taken into consideration in kerala we have got now they have classified it as 18 urban agglomerations the the biggest one or the one with maximum number of the population is kochi with a population of 21.19 lakhs out of a district population of 32 lakhs there is more than two thirds of the population of the district is within the cochin urban agglomeration almost similar is the case with kolikot the kolikot urban agglomeration i am i think it may surpass the population of kochi by the 2021 census so the urban population is more than two third of the total population yet we plan mainly for the rural so the urban component has to be taken separately so why don't we think of having a metropolitan planning committee that is visualized in the 73rd and 74th amendments so my first submission is that we have to think to begin with kochi then to kolikot and other areas as the case may be we think of constituting and metropolitan planning committee so that the urban agglomeration taken together which for example for kochi comprises of kochi corporation i think eight or nine municipalities 14 or 15 panchayats and etc etc with a population of 21 this is urban we have got almost all the almost the entire coastal area and the majority of the midlands classified as urban by the 2011 census they have 461 census towns in kerala the census town means it is a township town area with all urban amenities the only thing is that we have not classified it as a statutory town it is not a municipal council it doesn't have a municipal council that is the only difference but the issues are urban problems are urban the aspirations of the people are urban so when we think of such a thing and then that scenario if you have a spatial component for the plan etc that should give us or it should be capable of giving an, an urban space i repeat urban space even for the 461 village and villages which has been classified as urban towns right so there should be an urban living space which is climate resilient as the which has to be specifically said which is sustainable where the well being of the people is more important rather than the growth based on the gdp and again the model i mentioned is to be sustainable and we are totally based on an equity based developmental model these are the primary concerns we have if that is the case from the experience we had in 2018 and 2019 etc etc and the uh, sword of climate variations happening etc we have to think of a spatial component in planning whereas people usually say the land use is the primary concern no doubt about it but along with land we have to think of water as well so it should be land and water management that is the primary concern so whenever land use comes to the picture it should be associated with the water bodies streams and everything as we have experienced in the midlands in 2018 in the floods the midlands experience a lot of it parur chengannur and other areas were flooded for weeks because of the disturbances that we created in managing the water bodies the water flow etc so that this thing the spatial planning 
should have a component or the major component is management of water as well and for that if you consider the master plans or whatever things you can call it can be the master plan can be the structural plan separate one thing as the people they call the small and smaller one the detailed town planning scheme dtp schemes and things like that and all these things should focus on these formulations these things and has to be broad based the climate change actually has given us a many out of the six corporations we have corporation the municipal corporations we have except thrissur all the five are coastal so the coastal issues like erosion sea erosion then this uh, well saline intrusion these are the major problems that are being faced or that will be faced by these urban local bodies so the planning the spatial planning should have a component to address these issues without this how can we give a sustainable or well being based living space in an urban area now we speak about the water supply schemes then drainage sewerage and things like that and then rest the entire thing to water authority because water authority is supposed to do that just as you have got electric supply, electricity supply by kscb except in trichur the old trichur municipal area there the electricity supply is still by trichur corporation in all other areas the electricity supply by the para state electricity board water supply drainage and things by the para state water authority and the corporation municipality township etc has no authority over the transport arrangements the arterial roads through which has best best has to travel where should be the best stop these are all things that are determined by others persons or authorities other than the local administration the second administrative reforms commission national level of which veerappamalli was the chairman they have categorically stated that you have to do away with the para status these responsibilities have to be taken over by the local bodies are the local bodies capable of that if they don't have that capability by the 74th amendment we have given the government has given the total responsibility for planning in a particular local area total responsibility for planning in a corporation area to corporation council municipal area to municipal council and in a panchayat to the gram panchayats and we are now speaking about those things and who are actually doing it maybe the town and country planning department does the exercise for the local body and that happens to be a technocentric bureaucratic thing where there is no participation by people the as there is no people's participation it is being totally rejected at every stage by the local people and we have got master plans prepared rejected revised again rejected and that process goes on for years and even decades and we have to put an end to that so that is where the decentralized approach comes into the picture we have got ward committees our gram sabha i may say again that report that i mentioned they said that the kerala doesn't have gram sabha they say it's only ward sabha because you cannot think of having 20 gram sabhas in a panchayat a village panchayat can have only one gram sabha but we have if there are 20 wards 20 so that is that creates some problem anyway that is the lowest body the ward the ward and the ward sabha and in the municipal area we have got the wards committee they sit together and have a plan and things like that and the ward plans at the local level and at the agglomeration level because when the land and water use comes into the way especially when the water use comes into the picture a single local body alone cannot be taken as a unit because the flow of the river the small or big whatever it be the water 
there are riparian considerations and things like that that has to be taken in a larger context so the spatial planning has to be built upon from the lowest ward up to the local body then to the agglomeration if possible so if that way when you are constructing it i am sure there will not be any rejection so from this techno centric approach you will have to go to the people centered approach and when doing that there is a problem of lack of expertise lack of expertise in the local bodies and even lack of expertise in the town and country planning department the personnel at present in the country town and country planning department is only concerned with or they are only used to give permission sanction etc for the building builder that their entire time is consumed by that business doing that clerical business so this involves a bit of academic work also so we should have this setup to be strengthened i am not sure whether I, I, i don't argue whether it should be at the corporate local body level or at the department level whatever now the local bodies and the department has come under the same department now the unified local service so at whatever level it can be there so there should be that competence expertise in that in that realm i may also add on one point the government of kerala with the finance minister the former finance minister thomas isaac when presenting his last budget has introduced a concept one local body one idea o l o i it has been short formed the local bodies have got many problems to be solved which doesn't have they don't have an answer to that unfortunately the planning committees over there and the expertise that is available with the local body also is not capable of providing those solutions but there may be academics or academic institutions within the local body area or even outside which may be capable of studying this and suggesting solutions though so they can make use of that and in the budget a provision was made under the name spsn innovation fund that fund which can be utilized for and for that one the oil i under the leadership of kdisk and with cooperation from kila they are now moving a long way in that direction and 14th and 15th i think the first tot is there in kila the training of trainers to equip the local bodies to make use of this thing so we have got issues like that so in this one you have got a lot of engineering colleges many colleges where there are architects being molded out so these institutions and uh, the colleges university departments and other institutions who are working on this one can be their expertise can be used by the local bodies in their preparation of what we call as the spatial component of the plan so with that if this component also is added into that and the expertise sought from outside or within the local body area we can think of an integrated thing of spatial planning coming into the picture of your annual five year whatever it be the extended but these plans no doubt has to be flexible now many say that the rigidity of the master plans that they prepare we have planned for 2040 so up to 2040 this thing will not change but a flood changes everything so this has to be at some to some level this has to be flexible i don't argue that you should change this as as and uh, when you use it when you need change you change it no that way but when a change becomes essential there should be provision for that also it should not be that rigid and with this in mind now the government i am sorry one minute only i will be taking more the government has now initiated as everybody of uh, here sitting here will be knowing the new kerala action plan nava kerala karma patthi which envisages many of these things a living space a good living space 
along with sustainable development with happiness and everything included in that one equitable living so for that the concept of planning and in which you include the spatial component with the climate and climate related disasters the possibility in mind where we can have a climate resilient living space and for that one the local bodies will have to be strengthened and the local bodies will have to be prepared they have to take their people into confidence and move with this concept of say area based i may say that locally specific planning thank you now it is open forum uh, i think we can allow to 5 to 10 minutes for that my my question is to joseph and madam in one of your slides you have written that thing in you know, the city has to be kegadilla in one of your slides you uh, mentioned that the cities has to be compact so that land can be freed up for use of houses and housing and other utilities uh, can you just uh, explain me because you know if you are using it again for housing and utilities that again becomes a city so uh, how how uh, what do you mean by that see i was talking about that um, we have 19 urban agglomerations and as pkr has, has mentioned 461 census towns our urbanization is spread and scattered like this and land value is uh, increasing also because of this urbanization the land value is increasing that is the most important thing we we are facing the difficulty we are facing even for public sector activities we are not getting land we uh, we have to invest huge amount for land purchase this is one of our constraints even for housing people are not housing is a basic necessity for life even the ur uh, urban habitants are, or urban um, r residents are finding it very difficult to for housing that is what i mentioned because of this uh, scattered nature uh, uh, and agriculture is also suffering if everywhere we are uh, uh, the if everywhere urbanization is spreading and urban needs are increasing the our that, that will be at the cost of agriculture that will be at the cost of land for other development purposes that is what i mentioned in that the other cities in other states we don't have that phenomenon also in other states the urbanization is concentrated in certain areas in highly densely urbanized area. here law uh, less density sprawl is very big issue kerala is going to face that is what i mentioned uh ma'am since you represent the government um i my question to you is so the spatial planning though we are laying a lot of emphasis on it the local bodies are finding it extremely difficult to find the funds required to even collect the data which is required for the spatial planning so is there any provision that you are trying to make from the government to enable them or empower them to ca carry out this data collection yes uh, in the 14th plan our approach is that the local governments should be provided with a necessary data and maps for their spatial planning processes 
finance is not an issue for data here in Kerala. Okay, they are, uh, they can easily access data. Only thing the department should provide them that we will take care of. That is an approach in the 14th plan also uh, that uh, free dissemination of data for planning. So data based planning will solve this issue. We are giving much importance for data this time in the 14th plan approach. Actually, there was a lot of criticism on the town planning department, now the LSCD planning department. Actually, it's uh, positive to a certain extent. Malayalathil uru chullu ondu. Uru mradangathil uru randu side yinnu adi yittu ondu. Plan ondakki alu adi yittu, plan ondakki alu adi yittu. Aan uru process ila anu, namal ippol ullu. Plans engane engil oka local body a convince yithu, local working committee koodi, special committee, integration committee, yellaan koodi. Avasanam plan publish yithu kajayim bop. Actually, parangya yinjayal, the whole thing changes. Everyone wants development, but though none of them want to spare his land for development. That is one of the biggest problems which we are facing in the state. Uh, to a certain extent, it's right, but to a certain extent, we have to look on an overall concept of development perspective. See, when you are talking about the risk information, we know that there is a lot of places where you cannot build, actually. But over a period of time, a lot of places have been built. Because of that, we are facing the problems. And uh, coming on to the, uh, the uh, master plans uh, being rigid, we have a provision that is brought up in the amendment that every 10 year the master plan can be, uh, has to be revised. And before that, if it has to be revised, government has the power to uh, um, uh, revise the plan even after one year. Alapura master plan is sanctioned 2022 February. We are again revising it in, and incorporating the risk information into it and trying to sanction it. So there are provisions wherein uh, it's a flexible and uh, we can modi modify the plan accordingly. Thank you. See. Just, just a rejoinder to uh, Rajesh what you are saying. Ravindra Sarno is a little bit of a serious thing. It's not 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 a serious thing. Adi ni Mumbai 92 bilah the Constitution Amendment was Amendment came, and even before that there was a urbanisation report by Charles Correa sir. But even after 30, 40 years, the local bodies could not prepare a single plan. Actually, I tell you, thousand local bodies were there in Kerala. After that, their corporation was there, other municipalities were. Panjais were there. Even for a first master plan was prepared by the Creator uh, Coaching Development Authority. So, uh, at least, uh, I was part of a town planning department for some time. So, I have got some affinity to <laughs> town planning department. But I am not saying that. At least the department was preparing something. What was lacking with the local bodies in preparing at least uh, some uh, plans? which is participatory in nature rather than not technocratic okay see um, mr rajesh was telling about the criticism we have raised this is not a criticism as such we are all working for the government this is only an i this be for, for the people yes okay when in in at least in these forums we have to open up otherwise we won't if it is planning board also, if it is town planning department, whichever department is present here, they, it should be an eye opener. The session should be an eye opener. And uh, of course, the people's representatives' determination and uh, strong will is necessary for implementing the master plans. Uh, I am not hiding that. It is not your fault that the uh, master plans are not implemented. What I have mentioned is that we should sensitize the local government representatives, people's representatives to implement this. That is not happening. We should work together so that the people's representatives and the people get informed about these master plans and the importance of master plans should be disseminated to them. That is what I mentioned. Anyway, whatever defects we have, we will correct it in the coming years. That is what I mentioned. 
so we are all responsible for the not the town and country planning alone all the representatives of different departments dip, all the di departments and the planning board itself is responsible for this fault what is happening now and we will rectify jointly that is what i, I mentioned here <laughs> thank you i will pass it on to pkr rajesh the question is we are really criticizing not your department but the system it is a system that has to change whether you have to modify make amendments at the corporation municipal level or at the department level that is to be discussed and come, uh, we have to come to a conclusion but the system has got basic defects that has to be addressed that has to be understood first to be agreed it is defective on whose part the defect is that is not the question it is defective that has to be amended that amendment as josephine was saying from the part of the planning division being the head there the government is trying to amend it to some extent there the contribution from the people side especially from the local body side the leadership on that side this way we have to amend it like that and there definitely there should be participation from the part of the people from the part of the people doesn't mean from the part of the elected representatives there are others in addition to elected representatives was once it is approved and then a rejection comes on the people side the people's representatives usually say that it is the defect of the department we are not responsible then the blame is put on your side that is how you have to be you have to bear the blame so that is why we say that it should be from the bottom up not as top down right so i have three questions one is to josephine madam you have mentioned in your presentation that uh, uh, that uh, decentralized planning uh, the spatial aspect is also inbuilt in the, uh, that uh, decentralized planning to the level of indigenous knowledge uh, thank you for using that word indigenous knowledge if that is again in your presentation you also mentioned that compact urban development is required uh, from your knowledge is there any corporation or any municipality uh, in their decentralized plan bring about this concept that they require a compact urban development if it is so in in there any any of the uh, decentralized plans made by this local body is they mention that they require compact urban development it's a very important question i don't claim that uh, the city corporations and municipalities have come up with a compact urban development plan but in certain sectors they are doing that those in those people's representative who are, who are enthusiastic who are cautious, conscious about the spatial planning are trying to bring some spatial dimensions in their in different sectors that is happening but it not but it has not happened in a compact mode that's what the reply for that but we'll try uh, then yeah. second question is that mm -hmm. you also mentioned about the river plan to be taken up by the town and country planning department and all this thing is there any statutory provision uh, that such plans has to be prepared by if even if it is taken up by the town and country planning department uh, is it statutory provision or statutorily is it uh, enforceable uh, if such plans are made because in my according to my knowledge as per 73rd and 74th constitution amendment constitution has very clearly mentioned about the three tier system in uh, rural as well as in Uh, urban area and the integration of various levels and the various spatial as well as planning aspects has to be done at local level block level and district level in the rural area the other one is nagar panchayat municipality and corporation in the uh, urban level if such statutory system is there what is the meaning in preparing a river plan by a, a, a town and country planning department then third question is to ravindran sir uh, sir in 19 if my memory is correct in 1995 itself kochi has been declared as metropolitan area by the governor of kerala at that time in kochi kolikod and tiruvanandapuram in my if my memory is correct is already declared as metropolitan area 
and 73rd and 74th Constitution Amendment Act, it's clearly mentioned that uh, wherever there is a metropolitan area, MPC has to be constituted. If such a system, what, what is the resisting factor not to float a MPC in this area? See, regarding the river plan, see, we don't restrict planning process to uh, an individual LSD. Now our policy is we should co have a comprehensive plan, an integrated plan. So many local bodies can come together. Even urban lo local governments and rural local governments can come together. In urban agglomerations, we are planning like that. All the local governments coming under the urban agglomeration is coming together in a common plat platform. So in the case of river plan also, it is not the duty of the town and country planning alone to do that. We have to sit in coordination with different departments, the river uh, irrigation department, minor and major, and the local governments can sit together, even town and country planning can contribute in spatial dimensions also. So it is not alone, the town and country planning alone cannot take that, but they can take the initiative. Because in, during the 2018 flood also planning board has uh, given some in instructions that uh, the drainage plan has to be prepared for that Pamba region. So this is happening, this is, uh, but it, is, uh, it cannot happen in an isolated approach, it, it should come in a coordinated but approach. But can we say that approach. it is not happening, whether these master plans uh -huh. or uh, even if it is a piecemeal approach, some of the district has also prepared the district plan, district special plan. Whether they have considered any of this drainage plan for their plan preparation process? Yeah, uh, this uh, perspective there. plan for the de or development plan was prepared five years back. And now it is in the stage of updation. That is why I mentioned that in the district development plan, a spatial approach has to be brought in. So definitely this drainage plan also should come in because after 2018 only we experienced severe floods. So this updation has to take place in the district development plan. Definitely that has to come in. So this your question is very important also. Let us continue this. Sorry, let us. The question is a bit different. Metropolitan area and metropolitan planning area are different. When they constitute a metropolitan planning committee, it totally dealings and becomes independent of the district planning committee. A totally different, separate, independent authority has to be constituted and that requires a policy decision on the part of the government. Okay, let us conclude our uh, session here. Um, any success of a plan means when it is implemented. So plan, if you are doing planning, it means it, it should be implemented. See, as it is, our master plan is still in paper. It need to be implemented. So in order to implement this master plans, we need a built mechanism for implementation. So there should be some integration between spatial planning and there should be some built mechanism for integrating spatial planning and the local planning. That, uh, so let us think a solution like that. So main uh, suggestion it came is that uh, a midterm, that is five year uh, plan, in between annual plan and uh, uh, long term uh, master plan. Let, let us create a plan under special platform. So it will be more effective, it will be more implementable. So it can be integrated. With these words, uh, let us uh, conclude this session. Thank you. Well, thank you, sir. It was a mixture of hot and uh, humorous deliberations, in fact. Uh, so we had a wonderful time. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ajit Kaliyat, uh, Dr. Srimadhi Josephine, Madam. Professor P.K. Ravindran sir and uh, Sri Jacob Ishu sir for sharing uh, chairing the session. We had a, uh, a very informative discussion and a very uh, strong deliberations in this regard. Hope the points.
which we were discuss, uh, discussed over here would be taken uh, back and taken forward by the planning fraternity of the state especially i request uh, uh, madam dr bina philip madam um, honorable mayor of koriko district to kindly uh, hand over a gratitude uh, token of gratitude to the chair and speakers of this session thank you madam and thank you all the panelists uh, we are not delaying further we are taking over to the next session straight away uh, the next and the last technical session of the bodhi 2022 would be a much diverse session it is more technologically oriented uh, so we have a session on application of drone in urban development and the gis tools and techniques in town planning uh, for chairing this session, I invite uh, Dr. I mean, Sri K. V. Abdul Malik, uh, the Secretary GCDA himself, to the stage. Uh, Sri K. V. Abdul Malik, Secretary GCDA, is a graduate uh, architect from NIT Calicut who completed his architecture in 1990 and further is an mem associate member of Institute of Town Planners India. He also holds a master's degree in business administration with specialization in finance and a master's in business law from National Law School, University Bangalore. He has been uh, with uh, Larson and Tubro ECC for about four years from 1990 to 94. And since 1994, he has been with the Department of Town and Country Planning. Uh, and further, uh, he has been in the position of town planner since 2010 and he has served as project director at Impact Kerala and is presently uh, holding the designation of senior town planner and secretary of Greater Cochin Development Authority uh, since uh, 2021. So uh, I, we are very happy to and fortunate to have uh, Sri K. V. Abdul Malik uh, for chairing this session. And uh, as a speakers, we have Sri Prayush Podar, uh, Chief Marketing Officer and Co-Founder of Kesava Infinite Ventures Private Limited. He holds a bachelor's degree from St. Xavier's College, Kolkata and a master's in building app, uh, business administration from SP Jain Institute uh, of Management, Mumbai. He has about 12 years of experience working with the government in different fields with including uh, projects in PPP, market redevelopment with municipal governments, etc. Experience of water utility operations and energy utility operations also add, is added to his credit. He has completed around 1000 plus aerial intelligence missions in India for urban planners, utilities, pollution control boards, etc. So I invite Sri uh, Prayush Poda to the stage. Kindly occupy the dais, sir. And we also have with us uh, Sri Jake, Jake Jacob, uh, GIS head of uh, UL, uh, Uralingal Labor Technology Solutions Private Limited. Jake is an expert in uh, GIS domain, have been involved with the ma various major projects in India and abroad and he is currently heading the GIS division of ULTS. Uh, and prior to joining uh, ULTS, uh, Jake was serving uh, with the Indian Air Force and he uh, took the, he left the services of the Indian Air Force at the rank of a wing commander after about 24 years of distinguished service and uh, he has won the award of uh, Chief of Air Staff commendation during his 25 uh, tw during his service is a graduate in computer science and engineering from college of engineering trivandrum and a postgraduate in strategy from the faculty of management studies uh, new delhi he is an expert in the field of uh, gis and uh, modern state of the art techniques in town and country planning and gis based spatial planning and analysis etc so we are very happy to have mr jake also present here so with that uh, i uh, request our chair sri kv abdul malik sir to take over the proceedings thank you sir Good afternoon all. <clears throat> See, this is the last technical session uh, or probably I will say the technical session in the whole uh, conclave because we are dealing with pure technology here. As you all know, the town planning uh, fraternity as a whole or the spatial planning fraternity is already shifting to uh, more technology based solutions. 
uh, probably some 10 years back we had only satellite imageries to work with. Now we are going ahead with uh, drone images with more accurate and uh, what you call less time consuming drone images. So now we have two agencies with us. One is a specialist in uh, drones. So uh, they'll be able to tell us about uh, the use of drones and the technology behind. And uh, we have an ardent user of drones in the next session. So he is, uh, Jake is an expert in using the drones and the other one is ma manufacturing drones. So we have a nice combination. So I think we'll have uh, a r really good information from uh, these two experts. Uh, I, and I have a request, since uh, both these uh, firms have uh, an exhibition running in the Con Conclave Hall, so if you have any doubt, please limit that to the uh, exhibition center, at uh, the, the exhibition center. So now I invite... Uh, So I invite uh, Sri Payosh Padar to make his con <coughs> contribution or his presentation on the drones. Yeah, yeah. One so by the time the stage is set for the show, uh, I request uh, there is two small announcements. All those who have received the feedback forms, please make it a point that you return the filled up feedback forms before leaving the presentation. And all those who have not received any feedback form, the feedback forms is right there. So if you can please collect it and uh, complete it and return it, it would be a great uh, aid for the conclusion of the uh, Bodhi 2022. With that uh, small remarks, we move on to the presentation. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Uh, my name is Prayush. Uh, 